Welcome to the Nitwits, a weekly roundtable discussion on the Penn State Nittany Lions now in its 25th season. Our panel features a longtime Penn State media and Nitwits tag team, Neil Rudell of the Altoona Mirror and Mark Brennan of Lions 24-7 with Fight on State. Between them, they've covered Penn State for more than 80 years. The Nitwits are hosted by WTAJ's Anderley Penwell, and each week we welcome a former Nittany Lion as our special guest analyst. The Nitwits are brought to you by Irwin Financial, Raymond James, a firm foundation for your financial future. By Monarch Cleaners, for all your dry cleaning, carpet cleaning, and rug cleaning. By Reed and Selaney Orthodontics, providing friendly, family-focused orthodontic care in Altoona, Bedford, and Huntington. By McAleer's Plumbing, specializing in plumbing, heating, and air conditioning, serving our community since 1886. By Remax Results Realty Group, committed to a culture of professionalism, productivity, and exceptional service. By Dorman's Jewelry, the answer is always Dorman's. By Star Beverage, no matter what type of weather, we're a convenient drive through one-stop beer store. By Kogan Electric, lighting the way for you. By Novacare, Altoona and State College, the power of physical therapy. By Fullington Tours, offering round trip transportation to and from Beaver Stadium from locations in State College and Altoona. By Blair Candy Company, the one-stop shop for all your tailgating needs. Candy, snacks, paper supplies, and more. By Lions 24-7 with Fight on State your online home for Penn State football and recruiting coverage. And by the Altoona Mirror, featuring Penn State game day every Friday and Penn State Extra every Monday. Welcome to Nittany Nation Overtime. Hello, hello, and welcome to another edition of Nittany Nation Overtime. I'm Anderley Penwell, joined as always Mark Brennan, Neil Bertel, and this week's special guest, Jessica Pekas. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me back. Good right. to see you, Justin. So yeah. we survived a rainy one in Happy Valley yesterday, a shutout win. Penn State wins 30 to nothing. Do we want to start with the fantastic run game or the defense? Well, I think with Justin here, we have to start with the defense, <laughs> and particularly good. the play of the defensive ends. I mean, you know, you're looking at a defensive uh, uh, line or a Penn State team that had 17 sacks through its first eight games, and now it's had 13 in the last two. And in this game, the way they came out and just absolutely set the tone early, that's a quality quarterback. Mm -hmm. You know, I know that they were missing some people on the offensive line. He's a little bit banged up. But to come out and set the tone the way they set the tone early in that game, you just never got the feeling that Maryland was going to be able to breathe. And it was, it was fun to see Chop Robinson uh, going up against his former team, coming mm -hmm. up with a couple sacks after the game saying it was just another game, and then Adisa Isaac saying, oh, he was amped all week. Mm -hmm. So you know what it's like, Justin. Sure. They were phenomenal. And as a you know, former defensive lineman, I always love to see them. That's where my eyes gravitate to as well. I thought that really the Ohio State game, um, go back to that, where I noticed the effort being put forth which was just, you could see it popping off the screen or at the stadium we were there, and I think they've continued to do that and really, really happy for the guys. I'm, I'm impressed with their resiliency. Okay, you mentioned Ohio State, and they've really responded since then, and they've responded in a way uh, with toughness. I mean, you're talking about defensive front seven play, putting a lot of heat on the quarterback, sacking the quarterback, and both lines of scrimmage, and particularly Penn State's flip it to their offensive line, how they've really stuck with the run, made two big fourth and one plays that they turned to touchdowns. Um, I think they're winning a lot up front with a mentality. Justin, you talked about, of course, your eyes kind of naturally gravitate towards the D-line. Which guys particularly stood out to you yesterday in terms of just whether it was those specific plays or if it was just It would have moments. to be chopped. Yeah, okay. yeah, I mean, he, he really is getting off the ball extremely well and playing with a high motor and that's that's the type of thing I, I notice so it was he played phenomenal yeah I also like some of their interior guys who aren't the biggest guys uh, but who are super quick like Zane Durant and Akeem Beeman both mm -hmm. of those guys came through with sacks so when you have that speed on the outside and these teams are getting into third down and long in obvious passing situations and they're able to bring out these super quick guys yeah. or 
We saw Abdul Carter, who's a linebacker, who they stick up there at the line in those gaps. I mean, it is a pick your poison for opposing offenses, and it's really fun to watch. The depth is phenomenal, too. Yeah. So, I mean, we have that wave after wave. That's tough for an offensive line to deal with. Fresh guys coming in and performing. Yeah, and look, you, you, you're two players of the game, at least in the mirror, were Singleton and Abdul Carter. So you're talking about two freshmen. So the future really looks bright for you know, and the amount of great recruiting that they're doing. I liked Carter as well. There was one play where the close, I mean, we all knew he's fast. We know he's a big, strong guy. His closing speed to just bridge that gap between him and Talia, it was, we watched up on the video board, it was, holy smokes, that's, that's that, that, not that a pops linebacker. At you. That's yeah. like a... The special ones all have that. I mean, back in my era, like Arrington or, or Brown, like their, their closing speed was insane. This kid reminds me of that. It, yeah. it really pops. He's one of the fastest guys on the team. Mm -hmm. I mean, w among all players. I mean, he is that fast. I mean, James Franklin has said that. I want to touch on something that Neil mentioned, the resiliency. You know, even in that Michigan game, when they were getting beaten up, guys were playing hard. I mean, they, they were getting burned for some long runs, but they were trying to chase the guys down. You compare that to what we saw from Maryland. I mean, on that Singleton 27-yard touchdown run where that guy just kept trying to strip him and the guys just stopped. I mean, when you take somebody's soul like that in a <laughs> game, seriously, I mean, that was, you're looking at that, and that team just gave up. And I think that's a pretty good sign for Penn State that it was able to impose its will to that, to that point where the, the other team just gave up. Well, Maryland really seems to get discouraged against Penn State. You take away the COVID game, and they've lost six games by an average of 38 points now. And I, I just, I don't know whether uh, the rivalry that they say they don't have with Penn State or the fact that Loxley and James were on the same staff together, but clearly, I think Maryland is better than they show against Penn State, but you gotta, you gotta prove that. And we talked about um, Singleton, touched on him. He seems to have a specialty of just getting like 30 yard, 45 yard long runs. To have a freshman come in and with Carter as well in those moments where you're beating the daylights out of people, is that important for development down the road? It is, and, but all, and I'm sure he would say the same thing. We have to go back to the offensive line. The offensive line is, is much improved. And then, yes, the kid, the kid is special, but it's not a situation where you felt like Saquon, when he was here, he did it all on his own. And you'd say, boy, imagine if he had help I think you're seeing a, a vastly improved offensive line and, and Singleton's doing well as a Well, and how about the job they've done with their short yardage situation? I mean, last James year against Illinois, it was an embarrassment. I mean, in those overtime games, that, that was just, I mean, <laughs> and, and to come back and they go with that T formation with two really good running backs, <laughs> and that's what people are forgetting about after this game. Yeah, this game it was Singleton. Previously, it was Katron Allen. When you have both of those guys back there, who are they going to focus on? And then you stick a good blocker and Brenton Strange between them, and they're running different ways, and Clifford's slick with the ball. I mean, they really took a hard look at their short yardage situation in the offseason, and I give Mike Yersich a lot of credit for, for coming through, and now they're almost unstoppable. Yeah, and then sometimes they use two tight ends in the backfield as well. Um, you know, they were real decisive on fourth and one. They jump right into it. You're not seeing situations where the play clock is winding down. Um, you know, just I, I think Yersic is really uh, doing a good job as far as, you know, his play calling and they, you, they know what they want to do. Of course, when you have a running back like Singleton <laughs> who Alan. can make well, but Singleton is a little different in that he can make one guy miss and go the distance. And that's not, that's not a knock on, on Catron because I think Catron's special in the fact that he can do things in, in tight spaces that are just completely unique. It almost calls to mind, Justin, you know, Aaron Harris and Curtis Enos, kind of the way yeah. that they were able to attack people back in the day. It's a good problem to have. Yeah. Quite a good problem to have. Quite the one-two punch as well. We have to take a quick break, but when we come back, we'll talk special teams and a funny sideline moment. Don't go anywhere. The Nitwits are being brought to you by Irwin Financial, Raymond James, a firm foundation for your financial future. By Monarch Cleaners, for all your dry cleaning, carpet cleaning, and rug cleaning. By Reed and Solani Orthodontics, providing friendly, family-focused orthodontic care in Altoona, Bedford, and Huntingdon. And by McAleer's Plumbing, specializing in plumbing, heating, and air conditioning, serving our community since 1886. 
You're watching Nittany Nation Overtime. Welcome back to Nittany Nation Overtime, and this is arguably the play of Saturday's <laughs> game. James Franklin doing push-ups on the sideline after getting flagged for an unsportsmanlike. After the game, he said that's his first unsportsmanlike uh, penalty in his 12 years, and accountability, everyone has to do the 15 push-ups. So how do we rate the form there, everyone? Uh, pretty impressive. He looked <laughs> like he could continue. I mean, uh, he's in good shape. But, you know, he owned that situation mm -hmm. right afterwards, which I think was the right thing to do. Um, you know, I don't know if there's a point of emphasis among uh, college fo football officials right now uh, to have, uh, you know, a little bit of uh, low tolerance because it didn't, we couldn't see it wasn't look like he was all over. They said that he was further out in the field than usual, uh, some of their staff, so I don't know. I take Franklin at his word when he said yeah. he was yelling at one of his own players. And, and I don't care, though. Even mm. if he was yelling at an official, that's amateur hour. You don't do that in a game. I mean, fortunately, in this game, it didn't end up having a huge impact. But are you going to tell me that these officials aren't hearing all sorts of words from players and coaches? Yeah. Yeah. All Justin, you were on the field. <laughs> I mean, Don't repeat and any what, of them, Some please. of the things that we saw out of Joe, he wasn't cursing, yeah. but, I mean, he's, he's running guys down from behind. Official. Sure. That, that's part of it. And, yes, a lot of those words that we used were not safe for work. And I won't bring them up here, but I, 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 I like that he did that just mm -hmm. because if you're going to talk about it, be about it. And so if you're going to hold a, uh, uh, the kids to the standard, then you know, hold yourself to it. So at post game, Sean Clifford said he was yelling at him. So for whatever that's worth, but back to his form, well, I thought he's used his, to that. His, yeah. elbows, <laughs> his elbows were out a little bit. I think he needed to tighten that up a little I bit. I wonder if he was about to slip out. Yeah. I mean, it was pretty damp, but we'll give him a solid grade on that one. But another, you know, interesting personality that came out in this game, the Pinnaker kicking was great, especially given the conditions and another 50 yarder. And he's been, you know, for the most part in Big Ten play pretty solid. What did we think in the conditions this deep into Big Ten? You know, play? I'm happy. Two 50 yarders uh, in the last two weeks, plus a 46 yarder right before the half. Um, you know, that's a kid that, you know, how many of these kids transfer, they leave, they lose their patience. You know, he's been a real leader, and I think that's a nice story. Yeah, they recruited over top of him with uh, Sander Sahadak, and he helped Sander. He's been nothing but a positive uh, influence. It's amazing to think that he has never had a 50-yard field goal until the Indiana game, and he hits that in those windy conditions. Then he comes and hits another 50-yarder. Uh, cool to see around. You know what the crazy thing is? He's got another year of eligibility left. He was technically able to redshirt last year, so... Uh, I think he's looking more and more like a pro career could be something that's in the mix. He's taken over the kickoff duties, done a good job, and even made a tackle on the kickoff yeah. team. So, and, and we talked about it off air before we started. The, the number of our specialists that are in the NFL playing is phenomenal. We're becoming like a factory for it. Yeah. And that's a good place to be known as because then you'll get the best because they know they'll develop and get a chance at the next level. So that, that's, that's a good thing. Linebacker you and punter, kicker, specialist you. Um, but pivoting away from that a little bit, are there any other players, any personnel changes that you guys liked in this game? Anyone else besides Chop that really stuck out in this one? Yeah, well, I'll give a shout yeah. out to Drew Shelton. I mean, second straight start at left tackle in place of Olo Fashanu, who's, who's banged up. That is a very difficult thing to do as a true freshman. And he's had one penalty in each game, hasn't given up a sack. And I just think for him to come in, and, and Justin touched on it earlier, just for that offensive line in general, Caden Wallace is out, obviously Landon Tangwell's out for the year now. Mm -hmm. For them to, to be able to plug people in and play as well as they are playing, I think is huge. You know, Juice Scruggs has been a real leader. Uh, over on the other side of the ball, you didn't have Joey Porter, and it was a non-injury situation, so we'll see how that play, plays non -football out. Non-football injury. Non-football injury. It was an injury. Okay. Sorry, um, I'm just helping. Yeah, excuse me. I practice this as a solo. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're looking right, for another handshake. Kalen King, I think, you know, has done a really good job in one-on-one -on -one situations back there. Yeah, and Johnny so, Dixon stepping in. Go ahead in. now. And Johnny floor's... Dixon stepping in. <laughs> go ahead, Justin. You can go up there. I, I think the, the young guys that you, you mentioned, uh, Singleton, uh, the linebacker in this tackle, there's no moment that's been too big for them. I, I, again, they have not melted under the bright lights, and uh, that's very impressive. Hard to do. So we've heard all season about how, you know, the freshmen have really not acted like freshmen. This isn't some mm -hmm. tiny program. This is one of the biggest brands in the country. Obviously a huge stadium in a major conference. When you have young guys coming in and being incredibly impactful early on, how do you manage keeping 18, 19-year-old guys 
focused, preparing them for what's to come, but still celebrating those big moments? What's that balance like? I don't know. I, I mean, I redshirted. And, <laughs> and, John and, Carter and, redshirted. I mean, yeah. a lot of people did. And, and, and really, that all those things of kind of learning the program and that had the benefit of it. I don't know how they're doing it, but they're handling it very mature. Uh, I, I always say this, that it seems like these players today are so much more mature than we were and, and, and just kind of ready for uh, all the things. And maybe it's because it, it, it happens for them a little earlier. But I don't know, I don't know how you do that and you know, keep them focused and prepare them for a season they've never been through. Um, they're doing a great job, though. Well, it's a, such an honest answer, uh, Justin, because it's a different time. These guys have freedom that you guys didn't have. You're redshirting. You might have a position change. You kind of knew you were going to be there the better part of four or five years. Sure. A lot of the, the be mm -hmm. best players now, that may not be the case. Yeah, when you go back and look at the goon class of 91 yeah. and the people who redshirted, you had goon, you had Kajana Carter, Jeff Hardings, Marco Rivera, yeah. uh, Mike Archie. It just went on and on yeah. and on and on. Bobby Ingram, I think, was one of the few people who played in that class. You can't do it anymore. Why can't you? Because scholarship limits because of the transfer portal. Yep. I mean, where would Penn State be without these two backs? I mean, it's, it's you know, you, you have these two guys, and one other guy I'd like to give a shout out to is Tank Smith. You know what, he's a walk on from the Pittsburgh area. He's serving as a leader there. I mean, uh, Kevon Lee is, is banged up, but for a guy like that, to, to, to be a little bit of a role model for, for these young guys. Obviously, he doesn't have their physical talent, but then to obviously get out there and have an opportunity to play in a game like that, very cool to see. And the best name in football. Like, if your name's Tank Smith, you have to be a Yeah, well, he looks like Can a little Can you imagine tank. if they would have connected on that wheel route? Oh, it would have been great. But we have to take a quick break. When we come back, the never-ending Drew Aller conversation continues. Don't go anywhere. The Nitwits are being brought to you by REMAX Results Realty Group committed to a culture of professionalism, productivity, and exceptional service. By Dorman's Jewelry, the answer is always Dorman's. By Star Beverage, no matter what type of weather, we're a convenient drive through one-stop beer store. And by Kogan Electric, lighting the way for you. You're watching Nittany Nation Overtime. Back here on Nittany Nation Overtime, let's take a look around the Big Ten. Ohio State rolls over Indiana. Purdue upsets Illinois. Rutgers and Michigan State, the next two Penn State opponents. Michigan State victorious in that one. It's no one's surprise. Nebraska falls at Michigan. Iowa beats Wisconsin for the Heartland Trophy. And Northwestern puts up a sole three points as Minnesota beats them 31-3. Yeah, great to have Justin down here. You've been a friend of the show. I know you uh, a, a sports dad. Uh, update us on the rest of your life. Appreciate that, and always enjoy coming down to talk some football with you. Nice new set here; it's very comfortable. <laughs> yes. So, uh, having fun uh, coaching my kids, and uh, just finished a football season, and uh, they're all very active, and been to hockey and everything else. So that's been a lot of fun, and then continue to uh, own and operate Atlas Therapy with the location in State College, one in Altoona. We also have a mobile division, which is new from last year, and and, and really, it's not even close anymore. We, we have the best places in in both communities. Uh, reputation, patient outcomes, and satisfaction. So uh, really proud of the team that we have assembled there. And uh, we, we call it a team because we treat it very much athletically. And um, Atlas Therapy has been uh, now uh, kind of fixtures in the two communities and awful proud of it. So any kind of injury, non-injury, non-football <laughs> injury, you can go to Justin's <laughs> Atlas <laughs> and, and right get up. that taken <laughs> care of. <laughs> it will get you fixed up. <laughs> Thanks for the interpretation. There, there you go. How about the quarterback? The Aller conversation, it never ends. I thought he should have, we should have seen him earlier. What did you guys think? God. I, I can't get my uh, head around this situation. You were, your Twitter was great you know, on I, Saturday, I just, Neil. I just don't understand because James explained by saying they want to get a comfortable enough lead to feel like it's okay to put him in there, but then they got to get some of their first unit guys mm -hmm. out because they're worried about their depth. And he said, quote, unquote, it's not an ideal situation. To me, it's a totally ideal situation. You got a big lead at Indiana and Maryland and teams that were no threat to you. Um, you know, I, with all the moving parts of these rosters, as soon as next year, you're going to be counting on this kid to be a leader. Mm -hmm. And I think you've missed an opportunity for uh, about a half a dozen meaningful series. I, I don't understand it. Yeah, I've mentioned it before. I think sometimes with the backup quarterback situation, they get into paralysis by analysis. I mean, 
just, you were, there was no chance you were losing that game. I mean, like, zero chance you, you were losing that game. So why not get him in a little bit earlier, and why not have him play with some of the, uh, some of the, some of the regular players? I mean, out at Indiana, he said you couldn't really compare Clifford to Aller because Aller was playing with and against a bunch of backup players. Well, give him the opportunity. I agree with you. I mean, uh, th this seems to be a really good dynamic between these two guys. I think Aller would benefit not only from going in there and playing against better players and playing with Penn State's top players, but also getting the feedback from Clifford after he does it. So I, th I agree with Neil for once that, that it would be a good idea to once get him in last week. That's about yeah. the fourth yeah. time all season. Well, Justin, what do you think about so the whole So I haven't heard you guys all year kind of – my thought is I, I can't believe he's not playing more. And in my head, I'm not at every practice, so I instantly go to maybe he's just not ready. But then when he plays, it kind of shows the other thing. So, I mean, I, I'm of the oak where I respect everything Sean Clifford's done, but I think this kid should be playing as much as, as humanly possible. And you just mentioned Sean Clifford. We haven't talked about him. Of course, on Saturday, he breaks the all-time passing record, and that just gets buried within the – the O-line play with the defense and the running back. So I think we need to give a huge shout out to that. Regardless of how you feel about Sean Clifford, he's a bit polarizing amongst Penn State fans. Mm -hmm. That's an impressive record for a guy who's been here, as he'd say, for a million years. So we got to give Cliff a quick he's shout out. He's been a great representative yes. of the program, yeah. too. James he, said the he's same a, thing. He is a good person. Yeah, so. and a good leader. So yeah, huge shout out to Clifford. When we come back, we will give you our upcoming picks for Rutgers Don't Go Anywhere. The Nitwits are being brought to you by Fullington Tours offering round-trip transportation to and from Beaver Stadium from locations in State College and Altoona. By Blair Candy Company, the one-stop shop for all your tailgating needs. Candy, snacks, paper supplies, and more. By Lions 24-7 with Fight on State, your online home for Penn State football and recruiting coverage. And by the Altoona Mirror, featuring Penn State game day every Friday and Penn State Extra every Monday. You're watching Nittany Nation Overtime. Here's a look at our Nitwit of the Year standings. Neil victorious this week, so now we are tied with at four each. And Mark holding up the caboose there. But uh, yeah. Well, he hasn't been mathematically eliminated, no, so we're, yeah, we're no being math. serious. <laughs> um, so you know, Rutgers picks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, Shiana, Rutgers usually plays Penn State tough, um, but I think Penn State has really hit a stride. Uh, I'm going to say Penn State 29, Rutgers 6. Yeah, I, I'll go next. Uh, if you look at the quarterback situation or the passing game situation against teams Penn State's played, when they've come up against these 55% passers, it, it's, it's been ugly. I mean, and I think it's going to get ugly. So uh, I think Penn State defense steps it up again. The offense continues to click, and Penn State wins 45 to 14. Mm. I think agree with you that it's going to get get ugly in this one. I think 41-10 uh, Penn State in this one. Just what about you? Only good reason to go to New Jersey is to hit the shore. <laughs> so I think that this is going to be more like a, a scrimmage, and Penn State will win 35 to 7. Well, as long as it was the flu game from last year, we all remember that one. Right. That one was a, as long as we can not go there, we'll be great. But make sure to tune into all things Penn State with our Knit Nation app. You can scan that QR code right there on your screen to stay up to date with all things Penn State scores, schedules, and stories. And don't forget to tune in next week for one of our final of the year. It's good. We went football season went by like that. But yeah, Justin, thank you for joining us. And Always good to be here. Justin, we will see you next week. Have a good night. The Nitwits have been brought to you by Irwin Financial Raymond James, a firm foundation for your financial future. By Monarch Cleaners, for all your dry cleaning, carpet cleaning, and rug cleaning. By Reed and Solani Orthodontics, providing friendly, family-focused orthodontic care in Altoona, Bedford, and Huntingdon. By McAleer's Plumbing, 
specializing in plumbing, heating, and air conditioning, serving our community since 1886 by REMAX Results Realty Group, committed to a culture of professionalism, productivity, and exceptional service. By Dorman's Jewelry, the answer is always Dorman's. By Star Beverage, no matter what type of weather, we're a convenient drive through one-stop beer store. By Kogan Electric, lighting the way for you. By NovaCare, Altoona and State College, we proudly support Penn State football. By Fullington Tours, offering round-trip transportation to and from Beaver Stadium from locations in State College and Altoona. By Blair Candy Company, the one-stop shop for all your tailgating needs. Candy, snacks, paper supplies, and more. By Lions 24-7 with Fight on State, your online home for Penn State football and recruiting coverage. And by the Altoona Mirror, featuring Penn State Game Day every Friday and Penn State Extra every Monday. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.